Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. We are currently recording live on YouTube, Facebook and on X. And in this and this edition will be available after this stream on all audio platforms. If you're watching or listening to the live show um, on Facebook, YouTube or X, please do get involved. Give us your thoughts on Tottenham season so far. And of course, our head coach, and Postacoglu. But before I start, I do have to start with some very sad news. Um, it has been um, brought to my attention that Tottenham Hotspur fan Peter Hayne has sadly passed away. Um, Peter passed away at his home after a 10-month battle with cancer. A well-known Spurs fan, a former Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust board member and secretary, a man that contributed so much to the Spurs family and local community. Thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Jill, and his family. Rest in peace, Peter. Now, on today's podcast, uh, we will be talking about Tottenham season so far. We will also be talking about Ange Postacoglu, and we will also be talking about VAR. Let's introduce the three guests. We've got channel regular Craig Dearman back with us. Craig, how are you? Yeah, well, good, Chris. Looking forward to this. Um, again, happier times for Tottenham. Um, <laughs> really looking forward to getting Ali's insight about what's to come and uh, how how right he was the last podcast we had him on. So, which pains me to say a little bit, but there you go. He was spot on. Well, we've also got Celtic fan Ali back with us, Ali Ross. Uh, Ali, so nice to have you back. Of course, the last time we spoke to you was a couple of months ago when Ange Postacoglu was appointed as Spurs boss. You told me that evening that the only thing bad about Ange Postacoglu was his jumpers. I think you're right so far. I think we're all happy. We're, we're all extremely happy with the managerial appointment. Yeah. How are you, first of all? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, it's good to be undefeated in the league again so far. That's both of us, actually. Um, yeah, no, it's been good. I think you guys have got a winner on Ange and he's proven himself so far, anyway. I like his jumpers. We all did. It was kind of tongue-in-cheek. Well, the, the the players are all calling him dad, and he said the other day it's because probably the way that he dresses. So uh, I did think of you when uh, when he said that. Um, let's introduce our other guests all the way from Malta. We've got Melvin with us, of course, channel regular. Melvin, so nice to see you at the Liverpool game uh, before the match. How are you? How did you find it? Yeah, I'm good. Um, you know, delighted with the result, you know, and uh, I'm sure we're going to discuss the, the craziness that went on. I'm happy that, you know, the, the atmosphere is, is, is returned to the stadium after last season. I think last season was such a downer that I'm just happy we have, you know, the attacking flowing football back and and we have a manager that, that complements that style of play and, 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 yeah, it's it's just positives all around, and we had a really good start to the season. Something that probably most of us did not expect. Maybe Ali Ali predicted that this would happen, but yeah, because I I listened to the last one, and, and I told Chris I'm I'm excited to hear what you're gonna say about you know what's gonna happen next because you predicted the first part of the season. Now <laughs> tell us tell tell us if we're gonna win a trophy or, or something like that. So. So you're one for one at the moment. So I'm excited to see what Ali's going to say. Keep it going. Well, Ali's smiling. That's a good sign. But before we talk about Ange Postacoglu, I want to start by talking about VAR. In the last couple of hours, um, Craig, let's start with you on this. In the last couple of hours, the referee's body, uh, PG MOL, have uh, released a full audio from the VAR hub relating to the Luis Diaz goal that was incorrectly disallowed in the Tottenham v Liverpool game. Liverpool game on Saturday. Um, this image that you see on screen now um, on the live stream, um, it said 2D line um, on the boot. Check complete, check complete. It's fine. It's perfect. The referee then said, well done, boys. Um, good progress. Um, game restarts with a free kick. Um, the replay operator then said, wait, wait, wait. The on-field decision was offside. Are you happy with this? The assistant VAR said, yeah. Um, the operator then said, are you happy with this? The assistant VAR then said, um, offside goal, yeah. That's wrong, Daz. VAR then said, what? The operator then said, on-field decision was offside. Are you happy with this image? Yeah, it's onside. The image that we gave 
um, them is onside. The assistant VAR then said he's played him. He's gone offside. The operator then said, um, Oli is saying to delay, delay, delay. VAR then says, pardon. The operator then said, uh, Ollie's calling um, in to say delay the game. The decision is onside. VAR then said, can't do anything. The replay operator then says, Ollie's saying to delay the game, delay the game. VAR then says, Ollie. Fourth official, Mike Oliver, then says, yeah. Uh, operator then says, delay the game, delay the game, stop the game. VAR then said, uh, they've restarted the game, can't do anything really, can't do anything. Assistant VAR, uh, yes, they've already restarted the game. VAR then said, can't do anything. Assistant VAR then says, no. VAR, I can't do anything, I can't do anything. And then VAR then starts swearing. Craig, what on <laughs> earth did you make of this? I'm so sorry I couldn't play the actual audio clip due to copyright reasons, but... I hope you got the gist of that. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, do check it out because this is an absolute shambles, in my opinion. I know that Spurs obviously got the three points. We've won against Liverpool on Saturday. Delighted with that. Of course, we're up to second in the Premier League table. Um, but you just know, you know, karma, you know, what goes around comes around and Spurs could be on the end um, of something like this. We know full well because we've seen decisions like this before. Uh, an armpit in the Champions League final. Of course, a penalty was given and the game was then ruined. Craig, what did you make of this incident on Saturday? <clears throat> I, thought, I, think, I think you've hit the nail on the head by saying that, you know, these, these things are going to come around again. And we've been on the receiving end of more than one of those. I mean, the um, I think it was Jota should have been sent off last year and then he goes on to score the winning goal at Anfield. So, yeah. look, this one um, against Liverpool was horrific in that, it was so bad. It was an absolute shambles, like you say. I don't, I, I don't like coming down hard on the officials because people say it's a tough job. Yeah, there's a lot of tough jobs out there. You know, there, there is a lot of tough jobs out there. There's jobs tougher than that, let me tell you. Um, and they should be getting it right. But it took the technician, I think it was, or wherever they were, were described, to actually say, hang on a minute, the on-field decision was... It, this is what I was going to say. It's the, it's the operator who is doing most of the talking there. Exactly. Um, and, and what I don't get is the whole communication thing. All someone needs to do, and these people have paid a lot of money, they're professional people in this job, all they've got to say is it's offside, it's onside. Exactly. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you when you actually listen to it, I mean, you know, I've listened to it a few times before the stream. Um, they, it's almost like they, well, A, they, they seem to be rushing everything. The, the VAR and this, the AVAR seem to rush every single part of that. Check, complete, check, complete. I think it's because uh, Carve said it on Sky. It, it seems like they're under so much pressure from everybody to get these things done quickly, which is what we've all asked for. And yet they got it wrong, which is understandable if you're looking at it from a speed perspective. But the fact it was so bad... You know, you know, we all sitting at home, you wouldn't have had the benefit in the stadium. But everybody at home, as soon as you saw that freeze frame, you thought, oh, God, yeah, he's onside. He's onside. And it was absolute. I, was, I couldn't believe what I was watching when they said check complete. And they started the game again. But what, when he, obviously hearing that, couldn't they have then, they're saying they couldn't stop the game because of protocol. Well, I think everybody, uh, I don't care if you're a Tottenham fan, Liverpool fan, whatever, if they'd stopped the game, when they said stop the game, then at least you'd have come to the right decision and VAR wouldn't have taken as much stick for what it is, surely. And look, we benefited from it wrongly, didn't we? But, but you know, that, that, that's just my opinion on it. It's, it's, it's a shambles. I can't, I can't really say that I understand the error because it seems so simple, you know, and it's the guy, the techie guy probably by the sound of it, that's the only one that spotted it. it it's, it's bizarre. But people saying do away with VAR, if it yeah. hadn't been for VAR, you know, the, the on-field decision was offside. So just just drop that in there. Yeah, yeah. Ali, what did you make of it? Do you have these terrible decisions in Scotland? Yeah. Um, it, it's a bit more backward up here as well. It takes a bit longer, I think. Uh, Anne's used to get right upset about it. A decision should just be made and it should be quick. That's how he sees it. And it just takes a long, long time up here for some of the decisions. And yeah, it's, 
it has benefited, I think, the game to a certain degree. Because uh, decisions that used to go against, and, and not being funny, but you get biased referees. It takes all that away. Uh, I don't care. I'm not saying all referees are. I'm just saying that there's some of them that lean towards certain sides. Certainly in Scotland, we all know that up here, we're conspiracy theories. But it is a fact. Uh, I saw an Alan Stubbs thing talking about the VAR earlier on. And and what he said was, he said, you know, he ran past the referee screaming, saying that, that had to be a penalty. And he said, the referee said to him, you'll never get a penalty against Rangers while I'm refereeing. So, you know, these things probably do happen. So at least VAR does give you that. Melvin, let's come to you. You were in the South Stand, so you would have seen this uh, pretty clear. Um, what did you make of the, de uh, the decision on Saturday, and uh, how can uh, how can this improve? When when I was there, and the sc the screen, the big the big four screens, it stayed. The picture remained for a good thirty seconds, forty seconds in the stadium, and I was thinking that's odd. Usually, when a decision is made, it will say offside, onside, and then the screen will be removed and will go back to having, you know, the live feed and you could see the players playing. And it stayed for another 40, 40 seconds. And in my head, I'm thinking, that's strange. That never really usually happens. And I'm thinking something something's odd. And even in that moment, it didn't look offside to me. I know, I know it, it was very, very close, but I was thinking it didn't look really offside. And and obviously we got away with it, but VAR in a way worked, but the communication is where it failed because the the lines were drawn properly and it showed that he was on he was on side. It's just they need to get the communication correct. And obviously, if they are putting pressure on the game to move faster because there's a 30 seconds delay, I would rather have another 30 seconds, you know, for VAR to get it right than than for my team to lose a goal. So all this pressure on VAR to get the decision right within 20 seconds, so 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 we don't lose, you know, you know, another 30 seconds in these decisions. It's, I would hate, I would hate for for this de decision to to been wrong when my team plays. I know yeah. we got we got the the lucky end of it this time because we were lucky, and 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 the fans that keep you know pointing at spares. It's like it's like we made. It's like it was our fault that that Liverpool got these bad decisions. It's not. It's I. I, I think some fans were blaming Spurs and, and Tottenham, but it's it's VAR and it's the FA and, and 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 these referees associations that need to get need to get it right. And it's it's just there. There will always going to be a learning curve with VAR, and and you you just hate you just hate it when these things happen to you. And I feel bad for, for obviously for the Liverpool supporters that travelled all the way down to London, you know, paid the ticket because we're all football fans at the end of the day. And you all want to see your club, you know, play football and not get, get, you know, it's really frustrating. If this happened to me and I flew from London, from Malta to London and we scored a good goal and it was ruled, ruled out, you know, unfairly, I would have been fuming. You know, because we pay we pay money and you, and you take yeah. time off work and you fly all all this way. To, I would have been fuming. So to, football sometimes you get you, you get bad luck and and good luck. And even even before the game, Chris, I remember saying to you, you know, football you you play you play your heart out, but sometimes these lucky situations or or unlucky situations they they come up because the game is so fast and 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 so quick that. These things were bound to happen, and 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 it's a learning, it's a learning mistake for VAR, and and I'm sure they're gonna create some kind of protocol for it not to happen again. Well, I could understand it if the line was like that, <laughs> but of course it is like this, and I, I I cannot understand like like I said to Craig earlier, you know, for for somebody just to say it's offside or it is onside, you know, just the, the clear words, which, you know, VAR was brought in to be clear and obvious, you know, a clear and obvious word, it's onside or it's offside. I just, I can't, I cannot understand that at all. I do actually feel very annoyed about it. Of course, as I said, I'm very happy that Spurs have got the three points, but I know at some point, you know, this is going to happen to us and it's going to happen to other teams as well. So, 
you know, major changes are needed, uh, in my opinion. Craig, just very lastly on this VAR uh, situation, is it right to take those officials out of, say, the next couple of weeks' games? Is that the right thing to do? What is the right steps that they take, in your opinion? <clears throat> if, if a referee has a bad game, they tend to do that, don't they? They tend to step him down for a week. Um, I would imagine that's what will happen with these guys that was in the in the studio. I mean, they're going to be feeling dreadful, aren't they? Um, if you look at it like that. If, if mm. that was you and you'd made an error, we're all human. Um, they're going to be feeling awful because I, th I think I read somewhere else, um, somewhere on X, that somebody had said, imagine if you're a comp where you've messed up at work and every, and then it's gone online and gone viral, the video and the audio conversation of what you've done. I get it, it comes with the territory, but, you know, they didn't deliberately make that error. That's that's the thing. They did, it wasn't deliberate. It was just a monumental um I wasn't going to, I was not going to swear, but you know what I mean? It was a monumental error. Are so, you sticking up for him, Craig? I'm I... not. No, absolutely not. But it, not was, it was a dreadful decision. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying it was, it was a terrible mistake and it shouldn't not have right happened. Not. I think that, do you know what? It's a business. You know, I could, my 12 year old would have got that right. You know, the, the lines are clear. You know, what happens if Liverpool miss Champions League football by a point? You know, the money that's involved, it's a business. There's got to be an investigation into why it happened. And oh, yeah. the three of them have got to be suspended until that's done because, you know, you can't put people like that in charge of something so important. If they're not competent enough to do it, which is what it comes down to, it's their competence, then they shouldn't be there. That's my opinion. Like, like I said earlier, Ali, it, it seemed to be the, uh, the replay operator who is not even named, you know, you don't even get that person's name. They're doing all the talking, you know, the, the VAR and the assistant VAR, they just didn't seem to be coming forward and and and, and saying what was what. It's almost like he was dismissed, wasn't it? It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's the fact that they, listening to that is, is, that's the first time I've heard that, and that just makes me think, how could they even have been put anywhere near that if that's the level of decision-making? You know, you understand when a referee gets it wrong in a flash of a moment. But when you've got that information in front of you there, with the money that's involved in this football these days, you can't get that wrong. It's as simple as that. So, to me, they should be suspended. And whether they get another chance at it, if it was my business, they wouldn't be. <laughs> I suppose the other way of looking at it is, if this was a major final, saying that was a Champions League final and it, and it went that wrong, you know? Well, it did. I mean, that, that, that would, yeah, 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 absolutely. It did. Yeah, don't, you don't have to keep showing that. <laughs> no, but you know. You Every know time I, mean. I look at that, it just, it just gets worse and worse. That, that is a terrible decision. To, to be fair, that's the worst VAR and refereeing thing about just now is the ball to hand and hands and unnatural positions. I, I don't think anyone understands where the ruling is with that. In a, in a penalty box because anybody else on the pitch it doesn't normally matter in a penalty area that you know guy that's three four yards away we've all played football you know you know your arms could be like this just by your balance or anything you know i get it if you're going like that but if you're not physically going like that to stop the ball and it's just your arms are out from your side that's to me you can't be not from two or three yards away you can't be given penalties for that because what's the player meant to do you know yeah, and and you'll get players that are know they're doing it and they'll do it and they'll aim for it and and they'll get penalties that way. So I just think that's wrong. But let's go on to talk about um, Tottenham season so far. That is exactly what we're here for. Um, now I'm going to play a short video. It's about one minute twenty, um, just reliving uh, the mood from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Saturday. This video was very kindly provided by Jennifer, who is actually watching this stream. So, Jennifer, thank you so much for this video. But this is just to get you into the mood of what it was like on Saturday.
Melvin, this is what Ange Postacoglu has done in seven Premier League games. You were there in the South Stand, as I mentioned. You know, everyone jumping up and down, singing, dancing. What did you make of it? Yeah, I think I think the last time I heard it like that was the Arsenal 3-0. And I told my friend, I thought this was just as good, if not better. You know, the atmosphere has been really, really good. And I, and I don't know, obviously, you have to look at the results, but... Behind the scenes, we've done things as well. You know, there's the the drum and 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 James singing before the game and 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 the the trumpet and the flags and credit to to all the the, the Spurs fans that have that been doing that behind the scenes. But you know, the football helps. You're seeing that kind of football, seeing you know the tackles. You know, Van der Ven. You have the shirt behind you doing those. Really, really, really good tackles, defending really well, playing really well. You could see them. You could see that, you know, last season we used to say, are they going to turn up? Are they going to turn up? Are the players going to turn up? And on the range, I feel that we don't have that problem anymore. I think every game they're going to turn up and they're going to give it 100% and they're going to leave it all on the pitch. And if we lose or if we drop points, we, we drop points. But... I'll still be proud of the team. It's just I'm not worried that they're not going to turn up anymore. I know basically what's, what I'm in for before I watch the game. Even saying that against Liverpool, you know, we did we did get, you know, lucky, obviously. But I'm delighted with how we started. I didn't expect it to go to go like this. I thought maybe we would lose one game or, or, or maybe struggle. To win well, we did struggle to win certain games, but we scored. We scored very, very late, and that's something that Ange teams go through. And and I'm really curious to see how we're gonna be in the in the latter part of the season. You know, when when it's really starts to click and and um, and the signings have bedded in well, and and the fans have really taken to Ange, and and, and it's just brilliant. It's it's brilliant, and I and I'm really curious to see. If Ange is going to push the club behind the scenes, you know, not to be static in January, to see if we're gonna, if we're gonna push out for another signing, if he's gonna push out for more players, it's it's interesting time. It's it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen behind the scenes and 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 on the pitch as well. Craig, let's come to you. Melvin touched on there um, about the Arsenal atmosphere under Antonio Conte. That was superb. That was a lot of singing from the Tottenham Hotspur fans and it was a great atmosphere. But it wasn't anything like this. This was a party party atmosphere. Um, even before the Sheffield United game, one of the viewers, Jan, uh, I actually walked around to um, see James Black, who Melvin also uh, mentioned, you know, channel regular and singer at the stadium. And she even said to me, I feel like I'm at a pop concert. You know, the atmosphere at the Spurs Stadium so far in the three league home games under Ange Postacoglu, it seems like everyone is smiling, everyone is happy. It seems like everyone is partying. Everyone thinks that we're going to win every game at home because, of course, Ange has got this unbelievable home record. You saw the video there, how it has changed in these few months since Ange has arrived. It's incredible, isn't it? It is, and... <clears throat> dare I say, all predicted by Mr. Ross in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, it was it was mental. To, well, the thing about the game against Liverpool was was the manner of the win. It was the last minute. It was the drama. You know, it had, that, had to be drawn that. Obviously, you wouldn't have got anywhere near that reaction, but it's because we won in that, those dramatic circumstances almost for the last kick of the game. Then everybody's just up. And it, it's, it was just a phenomenal. I mean, I, I could only wish to have been there. I couldn't get tickets. I tried. Um, it would have been one of that. I had people, some people left early. My God, why would you leave a game early? I don't... Do, do you know what, Craig? I was, I was actually going to mention that as well. A lot of people normally leave early, but even Bacario joked on Instagram this week saying, we do it so you don't leave. I, I, I didn't yeah. see a lot of people leaving um, at this game because, of course, Andrew's already said, you know, a couple of times that we, we go until the very end. And, you know, you, you see the amount of minutes that go up at the end of the game now as well. And, and Spurs do go to the very, very last minute. And I think that's full credit to Postagoglu as well. Yeah, and he said, didn't he, look, bring it on. He said, 30 minutes extra time, we'll, we'll still be here playing. You know, we'll give you a game. And um, 
I, th- I think Ali said last time, he said his motto at Celtic was, we never stop. And I think it's kind of the same with us. And he's, he was, he's just been phenomenal and he's created all that. I, I just wish the club would get the rights to an instrumental version of Angels because it just needs, as much as I like Robbie Williams, you don't need him singing that. You can't hear the crowd singing all the words properly. I just, they need a proper instrumental version of Angels and, and then let the crowd sing. So th- th- that would just be perfect. But you know, with the Fonz and everything else. I mean, who didn't like the Fonz? Come on, you know, and then seeing Henry, Henry Winkler doing doing the video. Ali probably doesn't know what we're talking about with that. I do like it. Oh, like. you did see it. Yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And obviously James Black. I've sort of a few messages with James. And to have your lyrics out there and having 62,000 people singing the lyrics you wrote, yeah. I can only imagine what that must be like. Um, just phenomenal. It's a great time at the moment. Ali, I don't know whether um, you're used to that kind of uh, video and you're used to those scenes and you're used to the atmosphere, but it's very new to us. And Postacoglu has uh, transformed this Tottenham Hotspur team and certainly transformed the Tottenham Hotspur fan base with everyone smiling at the moment because we have had a couple of very uh, mediocre years. Um, you know, certainly the entertaining uh, or the lack of entertaining football at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, uh, particularly under Jose Mourinho, Nuno Espirito Santo and Antonio Conte. Are you used to these scenes? Is this normal for you? Yeah, well, look, Celtic have got a... Uh, they're well known for their, the noise that they generate in the stadium. You know, the, the Green Brigade, they, they're our kind of... Uh, I suppose the ultras or whatever you want to call them, they they, they start at the beginning of the game. They do tifos. They're they're there the whole game singing, you know. And but the whole fan base sing, you know. It's not just them. And European nights are second to none. You know, I, you're just not going to beat a European night. I mean, you get all the Barcelona players saying it's the the noisiest they've had a stadium and stuff like that. You know, that these people just don't make it up. You know, and I just think that when you think about what Ange has done. You know, it's all about adrenaline, isn't it? You know, he's it's all full, full on for the whole ninety minutes. So, you know, he gets the players pumped up, which then gets the fans pumped up. You know, if it's the fans that need to follow along with what's been produced on the park. If it's boring football, then you're hardly going to get up for it. But if you're full on it and you know they've given everything for it, then it gives you that kind of pride and and yeah, I think it's all about adrenaline, really. Ali, what, how would you describe Tottenham's season so far? Because, of course, we have played eight games, seven in the Premier League, of course, unbeaten. Uh, we started the campaign away at Brentford, 2-2 draw, then beat Manchester United at home, 2-0, uh, then bought, beat Bournemouth away, 2-0. Um, in the Premier League, um, beat Burnley away, 5-2, then beat Sheffield United, 2-1, after being 1-0 down, uh, came back with two late goals. Drew with Arsenal 2-2. Perhaps Spurs should have nicked the win at the Emirates Stadium. And then, of course, beat Liverpool 2-1. Um, we did also play Fulham um, in the Carabao Cup, uh, drawing 1-1 but losing 5-3 on penalties after Postacoglu made nine changes. What have you made of the season so far? Because I remember the last time you were on, you were saying that Postacoglu, when he started at Celtic, there were a lot of uh, doubters out there. When he when he was appointed and he didn't start, um, he, he didn't have the best start, did he? Yeah, he, he had three losses. I think it was it was either the first six or seven games. So w- when you come to Celtic, then well, you've just lost a Rangers manager <laughs> uh, for doing the same thing. You know, he's seven points behind, or they're seven points behind now. You know, that's a sackable offence in Scotland. Uh, it's as simple as that. So, but what what he did do is. You could see what he was doing with the team, the the style of play he was implementing. All of that was there. We just it just takes time to all gel all the different, you know. For instance, he does inverted fullbacks. You know, um, what he does is he likes to coach players and he makes players better because he gives them that freedom. And it then comes down to players. Look, players that he'll play in the Spurs team are people that can decision make well on the park themselves. You know, if there's players that are just used to playing a, a standard side of football out using their brain, I, I can't really see them getting very far uh, because it's so much on it. You've got to, you, you can't let your guard down for a minute. You know, and he doesn't allow it. 
Who he'll, he'd rather play a youngster than have someone just fill a fill a shot because he's a big signing. Ali, pre-season was pretty difficult for Spurs and Postacoglu. Of course, I went out to uh, to uh, the tour and, of course, went to Thailand and the, the game was uh, cancelled in the end just moments before it was meant to kick off uh, due to heavy rain. Uh, so it wasn't the best pre-season uh, for Tottenham. Um, are, you, are you surprised, I want to know, are you surprised by Postacoglu's start at Spurs? Be you know, particularly, you know, coming to one of the best, if not the best league in the world. I, I think... Look, Brentford are a decent side. That's a hard start. You know, Man United, let's face it, they're a basket case just now. Um, then you've got Bournemouth, you'd expect to win there. You know, but Liverpool, Man United are in there as well. You know, I mean, you're talking probably at the top 10 teams. Four of them are probably going to be in about there. So I would say, I said to you at the start, I, I thought... He'd find it harder at the beginning than I think he has. So, and don't be wrong, he's had a bit of luck along the way, and so have Tottenham. But you make your own luck. You know, if you're as progressive a team as that, then you learn your luck that way. I mean, there's, the reason why there's fouls in games and people getting sent off is because people are knackered. And that's why you'll score a lot of late goals, because they'll be the fittest team in the league. You know, because they'll just run all day. And he brings in players that will do that as well. Whereas other teams... Are, are different tactically with what they want to do with their teams. Rogers is different at Celtic now. You know, he's he tries to play a bit more. How would you be? He likes the attacking football. He plays a bit more of the. He worries about the back at the same time. So he's risk averse is probably the best word I could use, and that isn't going down too great this season so far. But he's had a lot of injuries. Carter Vickers out, Jota's away. Yeah, I think you've he'll have done better, I think, than most of us. We knew he would do well, but I didn't think he would do as well because of the defensive side of the game. Because we initially lost a lot of goals. I mean, you saw us in the Champions League, you know, when we were we were a better team against Real Madrid for sixty minutes and they beat us four 0 And that was nothing to do with midfield to front. That was all down to really the defensive side of our game, you know. So, yeah, I think you've done better than I thought you would have done it before. I'll tell you what, Ali, I don't know any doubters as Spurs fans now. I think everyone is fully on board with Postacoglu's style of play and the way that he has taken this club forward right now, which is fantastic to see. Um, Melvin, let's come to you. Adrian uh, makes a, a fantastic point here. Um, Spurs come back from a goal down against Brentford, Burnley, Sheffield United and came back twice uh, at the Emirates. Five times is no fluke. This young Spurs team has an abundance of character. It's true, isn't it? Under Postacoglu, uh, they keep fighting to the very end and, uh, you know, they do have fantastic character. Yeah, it's 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 brilliant because you, you we watch the game and you and under Conte, we, we would only have one or two chances per game. And if we don't score them, you just think we're not going to score today, are we? And under Postacoglu, you just know we're going to score. It's not It's not if, it's when. And my, when I went to the Liverpool game, my friend told me, he said, I really hope it's not a nil-nil. And I said, if it's a nil-nil, I'll give you a refund for the flight and for the ticket. I, I was so confident that we would score. And, hold and on, hold, hold on, Melvin. Ali, Postacoglu, he doesn't do nil-nils, does he? I, 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 I'm not going to start from front of me, but when you said that, I just, I can't imagine... <laughs> A game that played so openly as if we're going to be told no one's post the cockle in charge. It's just, it's not how he works. Yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's that's why that's why yeah. we've been so happy this season because mm. you just know we're we're gonna go for it even if we concede, which which we have been conceding. Like that comment said, it's just we're we're gonna score. We're gonna outrun the opposition, and. We've been lucky because the signings have bedded in so so quickly, and, yeah. and and something that I didn't expect, where that every single signing has worked, and 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 they all have been really really good, and he he can spot a player, and he knows, even Brendan Johnson, when 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 we were linked with him, I didn't think why are we going for this kid, why, and then when I saw him play, immediately I know I was like I was thinking. Okay, I can see what what he, what he was thinking. He he really fits his system. He's quick. 
he can really <laughs> be a player. Ali, the only thing I want to ask you is, going forward, I don't know how much you've seen Spurs. Which players do you think, you know, next season or in the later part of the season, he would look to upgrade on or 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 maybe add add strength to? I know we have injuries, but I think he'll have he'll have made his decisions on on the core he'll want to go forward with. I think January he'll make some early acquisitions. He doesn't like to do his business late. Uh, at Celtic, it was always done well in advance. Uh, for, he used Japan and South Korea a bit with us, so I would imagine he might look at that league again, uh, depending on what I'm sure he'll see out there. Uh, he's, yeah, he'll... We we he made players better, so there'll be there'll be kids in that team that will be able to come in. The the young left back that you've got, he's just brilliant. Uyog or whatever you call him, uh, the doggy, the right. doggy. I mean, I don't think anyone expected him to be playing as well either. You know, and it's just what he does. He gives these guys the responsibility to go out, enjoy the game. You saw them at the end there that you can see the players are enjoying it as much as the fans, uh, and it's like kids playing on the park. And that's uh, that's how I see what he does most for the players. Is that he? We had Greg Taylor and uh, Tony Ralston, for instance, two Scottish guys. He improved them. I'm not saying they're world beaters, but the you know the, the inverted left and right backs and stuff. He, I never thought either of these two would ever have the technical ability to play that role, and they both did well at it. To be fair, so if he can do that with that and what he had. Then, you know, you guys are, what was it, 440 million or something, your turnover compared to our 80 odd, 90 odd, 100 odd. You know, your TV money is ridiculous. So you, you're going to be able to bring in better quality stars. It's as simple as that. Your TV money allows you to do it. So he's going to work with higher quality. But I, I wouldn't expect him to go for your finished article, big stars. I don't think he'll do that. And I don't think that's Spurs' model, to be fair. You know, I don't think they go looking for, you know, he'll look for the next, you know, great player that's going to come up and out there because they need to be, they need to fit his system and he can work with them because they're coachable. Whereas you bring in players that have got a bit of attitude about them, it can disrupt the rest of them. And then you're paying more money for them and then there's disruption with that. I just think that he'll, he'll keep doing what he's doing. He'll make acquisitions. I think he'll... He, he won't have been looking at everything working perfectly now. He sees everything as a progression. So he's mm. starting now. Next trans one there will be that progression. Then the next one will be that one. And eventually, believe it or not, you'll, the play will become a lot more slick. And you'll see little changes because he'll, he'll add little things to the game. So a lot of the, the phases that he does, for instance, these phases are... They're all trained on the coaching, on the on the training pitch, you know. So they'll have been given so many phases now, but you can't learn them all overnight, you know. So you, you'll add phases to it, you know. And he had to go against low blocks all the time at Celtic, you know. And we found a way. And yeah, a lot of them were late minute goals. And it's just about believing. And he makes the substitutions. He's normally quite good with that at the right time. And it's about energy. People get tired playing against his teams. You know, no matter how much pros there are, especially the bigger teams, because, you know, they'll be playing three times a week as well. You know, whereas the ones that aren't playing three times a week might have a bit more energy, believe it or not. So that's probably why you'll maybe do better against some of the bigger teams this year that you've maybe struggled with before. Because you're just going to have the energy to keep up with them and tire them out. Ali, you're putting a huge smile on my face saying that we're going to see even more slick football when we're sitting second in the Premier League table, just one point behind Manchester City, of course, champions. Um, Melvin, before I come back to you, Ali, just wanted to ask you quickly, because there's been a couple of reports out today, uh, one from 90 Min stating that Spurs are monitoring Jota situation um, ahead of Al Itihad exit. Jota made £25 million exit in the summer but has been left out of the Saudi Pro League squad. Uh, winger is hoping to be uh, released and then be reunited with Ange Postacoglu. If Spurs went for Jota, would that be a good move for us? 
yeah, look, uh, I think you just look at his assists and and his play. But Ange knows him. Look, Ange wouldn't bring him down there if he didn't think he could do it. He's there's very few signings he made at Celtic that I would say were massive failures. You know, uh, most of them were good signings. Uh, they improved the squad, the team fitted into his style. Uh, so I would say, yeah, I, I think. But what's happened there is basically they're only allowed eight foreigners and Jota has been dropped because of that. So there's a big interest out there. I mean, we're happy we got our 25 million. There was even talk up here, though, that he might be reunited with Celtic. Uh, I can't see that. Uh, but, you know, especially if a team are going to get him for nothing, he's a good player. You know, he was well thought of in the Benfica system coming through. Mm. Mm. So he's decent, mate. I'd like to see him in a bigger league to see what he can do. I mean, look, most of the Celtic fans that watch are only watching so that we can all say, we fucking told you so. You know, and I suppose it's similar to the Australians. They were all telling us when he first came to us and we were all saying, who's this? What's this guy all about? You know, we, we needed someone top of, top, top of the range, you know. And he turned out when six or seven weeks, we're all sitting there thinking, yeah, I'll just shut up. Well, Ali, I should have actually said at the, the start of the show, um, so thanks for reminding me, I should have said hello to everyone in Australia and hello to everyone in Scotland, particularly mm -hmm. Glasgow, because a lot of people, a lot of Celtic fans now watch this channel because of Postacoglu and, of course, a lot of Australians as well. So thank you so much for watching and listening uh, to this podcast uh, in Scotland and Australia. Melvin, let's come back to you. Are you surprised on how quickly Ange Postacoglu has got this team playing his way his style, and are you surprised the way that we have got the results that we have so far? Because a number of pundits, a number of uh, you know neutral fans, even a number of Spurs fans said in the last couple of weeks, the big week is going to be playing Arsenal away, Liverpool at home. That is going to be a huge test. Is Are now people talking about Tottenham? Um, I think Poster Hoglu mentioned this in one of the interviews. He said, Basically, it's a new team. You know, you know, like in Formula One, when when you have a racing car, and and the next season, it's 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 a new car. It's a new team. Most of the players are different. I think two two players started the North London derby that we had last season, and I think they were Romero and um, Son. I think the whole lineup was changed. I think we've dropped so many players, and 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 Postecoglou's down to that. And 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 he. He can obviously, he has such a knowledge of the game that I, I'm pretty sure he, he watched us last season because most most managers watch the Premier League. And he would have known what Spurs were up to, basically, because he, he even watches the Italian leagues. He has such a knowledge of the game. And he, he, and he's, he's just a fan of football. And am I surprised? Yes. And, and at the same time, I'm not, because we kind of spoke about this in August. I thought we would have massive improvement when we add, you know, we all cried out for us for a left sided center back. We all said the same things the entire summer. We lost Harry Kane and and, and it didn't affect us because Postokoglu just gets the best out of everyone. And 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 in a way in in a way we haven't even seen the best of him yet. We're st I honestly think he's going to keep growing and, and, and improving. And is it down to coaching? Is it down to time? Is it down? It's down to everything. It's down to winning. The players will bed into it. Confident. It's down to, it's down to everything. And the more games we play, the better we will become. And our next two fixtures, you just think, OK, let's take it game by game. Let's not get carried away. If we beat you know, looting and, and, and we keep winning. The next couple of fixtures are winnable fixtures. When are we going to be considered as, as a serious team? Eventually, we're going to be considered as a serious team. We've played two teams in the top four. Yes, we've played three of the bottom three. But I don't know. It's just, it's exciting. And, and I don't There's no easy don't... games in the Premier League, though, Melvin, is there? No, there isn't. But what scares me this season is, is injuries. That's the only thing that scares me. You have a brilliant 11 
and, yeah. and, and on our day we can beat anyone we nearly beat arsenal this season and at, at the emirates something we rarely do we haven't beaten liverpool since 2017 and with a bit of luck and magic we did and and we can keep this momentum going it's all about momentum and 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 when you're happy and you're training happy and when you have players like Bisuma, you doggy giving it all on the pitch and 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 they honestly they leave it all on the pitch and and they're exhausted by the end and and you have injured players that are playing for for, for the manager and for the team and and so you know sonny and madison are carrying knocks and you have kulusevsky who come back from an injury from last season and now he's he's running the most in the premier league and and when you when you have stats like that you start to believe that 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 something can happen and and you start to believe in in the manager and 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 a happy fan base when when spares are happy and 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 we're all together and i haven't seen us like this since the early days of conte since when when conte came in in the beginning and he was winning all of a sudden and we did that we did that run in the end which got us champions league football i haven't seen us like that since then and when when the spares fans really really believe in a manager and 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 you could see you could see uh, you could see he has our support it's brilliant it's so exciting can, can i go back to you ali sorry craig I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute um ali this is why on every stream so far this season and particularly the premier league games i keep saying to all of the guests i'm not getting carried away yet because like melvin just said there whenever a new manager has come in even Nuno Espirito Santo won three out of three. It wasn't entertaining football, but he had a good start. Um, Jose Mourinho, um, you know, when we beat Manchester uh, United 6-1 away, everyone thought we were going to win the Premier League. Melvin just touched on it there. Antonio Conte came in. He had a good start. And, uh, and, and it's a funny stat, actually, because we're sitting with 17 points from seven games. This time last year, after seven games, we had exactly the same points. So everyone thought that we were going to... Uh, be a top team last season and of course we finished eighth with no European football obviously Conte left um, Stellini and then Ryan Mason and then no European football should I be getting carried away with these results and and uh, the way that Ange have got us playing I don't think getting carried away is the right word I think optimism is what we all hope for and we're all you know you know I I turn up to Champions League games with Celtic against Barcelona expecting to win, you know, and we've done it a couple of times, you know, so it's that's football, it's, it's what makes it so great. So, yeah, get carried away, as Anne says, why not? Um, look, Arsenal were way ahead last year and nobody gave them a hoot's chance of still winning the Premier League back then. So, uh, you know, you, you've got Man City to contend with. You know, you could be six points ahead of them with five games to go. It doesn't make you favourite, and you, everyone knows that, you know. So I think the good thing with Ange is, is that he's not even looking at that. He's looking at game to game, day to day performances. He's trying. He used to say it, say it like believe in the process, and you know, a manager makes a good football team. I'll give an example. So if you think of Tony Pulis when he was at Stoke. You know, he was a manager that found a way to win, but it was the worst type of football you would ever watch. Yeah. Ange just chooses to do it with style and with class. And that's the difference between these types of managers. I mean, a Pulis these days wouldn't ever put a team out and survive in the Premier League the way they play now. But Ange's time and his, his type of football will. You know, and, you know, you look at Brighton. You know, they, they play a similar, you know, pressing type style of game and they've got good quality players so it's not an easy league but you've got the right man that'll just stay there, his demeanour, he'll be focused he'll, he'll just have the team ready for every single game, none of them will be thinking about trophies yet or you know, they won't even be thinking of trophies until they're in finals mate that's that's how I see it, that's how he was Was he? it was game to game, didn't matter who we were playing what we were doing, you know when they start talking about trebles at Celtic or anything like that, he used to turn around and say I'm just thinking about next week mate Ali, did he ever change his style at Celtic? Because leading up to that Arsenal game, uh, I know I'm going to I'm going to choose Paul Merson to to um, to mention. I know I'm going to get a lot of abuse now mentioning that guy's name on this channel again. Um, but him on Sky saying 
Spurs can't go to the Emirates and play the way that Ange Postacoglu wants to play. They're going to be so open. Uh, you know, they're going to get ripped apart and Arsenal are going to score a hatful. Did you or, or can you recall any time that Postacoglu actually changed his style uh, due to the opponent? No. No. Just didn't do it. <laughs> it's, okay. it's the, way he, the way he looks at it is everyone knows how he's going to play. Klopp knew how he was going to play. Arteta knew how he was going to play. What did they do? It's like I say, he's got a winning formula. Why is he going to change that for somebody else's team? He's just not. That's his mental. That's my belief anyway. You know, at Celtic, you know, I mean, we went out against Real Madrid, mate, and ran them ragged. You know, and our teams just don't do that. And yeah, we got beat 4 0, but the fans were still appreciative. We were, we were all gutted that he went to you guys because we were looking forward to him in the Champions League this year. This section we've got now, I think he'd have done well in that section, you know, with the team and the style we were playing. But He's not here, and we've got Brendan. Ali, have you bought a Spurs shirt yet? That's never going to happen, I'm afraid. My <laughs> uh, and especially with uh, my friend Mark Diamond on the on the call. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I know where I'm. My loyalties are, but happy to discuss with you guys as well. I've got. I bet you were looking out for the results all the time, though, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, well, it was mainly because of some of the comments I made. Things like, Son will score more goals, third top goal scorer. Uh, you get rid of Harry Kane, you got rid of Harry Kane. All these type of things were all inevitable as far as I could see the way Ange is. You know, and Madison's a great buy. His left and right backs, they'll be more involved in football than they've probably ever been uh, coming inside and that. I, I saw a comment as well about uh, from Glenn Hoddle slagging on saying that was it sticky brought on was his name he brought he brought on one of the players and he was, he was basically saying that he should have had him out wide but it wasn't his job to be out wide it was the winger's job and then solomon kept coming inside and running into which, people which game was this oh i can't remember i just saw it on one of the facebook things that uh, glenn hoddle was slagging off Ange's tactics but that wasn't his position, you know. It was was it shrill or something like that? It begins with S. I don't, know. I don't know who that is. Skip. Oh, Solomon skip. skip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. skip. Right. Yeah. So he was he was saying that it Ange had a pop at skip, I think it was. And he said, but Ange put him in the wrong position or played him tactically wrong, got his tactics wrong. But he didn't, you know, because he was saying that he should have had him out running down the wing. But that's not what Ange put him in there to do. You know, that was Solomon should have been staying out wide. You know, and he wasn't. So this is what I mean by it'll get slicker, guys, is that things like that are going to happen when you're trying to learn this. You know, yeah. eventually yeah. the positions and the transitions and the play and all the different phases that he'll play, it'll be mm -hmm. trained for them. You know, so they'll know what they're doing. And it's just all second nature stuff for them. It's just boom, boom, boom. And that's how it seemed at Selic. It was like some of the players we had there... I'm shocked at how well they played, to be honest with you. And, you know, it was more from a skill set. You know, it was like, you would think they would bounce off their sins and stuff sometimes with, with some of the players. But the, honestly, mate, the, some of them were just playing so well that he's, I think it's because they don't have to think. You know, players are better when they don't have to think. When they think, they make mistakes quite a lot. And I think it's just, everyone's such instinct to them. And he wants them all to play with instinct. You know, he wants them all to just play, right? You, you know how to play. So if, if you've got a tactical brain in you at all, then you'll you'll have a, a great time with his football. And they'll love learning it as well because he just wants them to... He can't make a team win. They've got to go out and do it for him. You know, so yeah. he gives them the tools and lets them just run ragged. And it works. I don't know how. <laughs> so it just works. Cam writes here, the under-21s are doing really well. Do you think any of them could start in the first Spurs team? Um, I certainly think that Jamie Donnelly will get opportunities from the bench. Of course, he was named on the bench um, against Liverpool on Saturday. Um, a big step up for him and hopefully he'll get more opportunities in the near future. Um, Craig, let's come to you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, injuries to key players because Melvin touched on it there. And I've said the same in recent weeks. James Madison has been a revelation since he's walked through the door, uh, you know, from Leicester City. And when you think 
40 million pounds what a steal for someone like james madison or if you want to put another another way 30 million pounds plus harry winks going the other way incredible business um hunmin son of course through the middle scoring a number of goals as ali's mentioned um and then of course the defense really important van der ven has just fitted into this tottenham Hotspur team um remarkably well um, alongside christian romero and the other thing i wanted to talk about is um the way that Ange postacoglu appointed hunmin son as captain um, and then, of course, Madison and Romero as vice captains, I think is a masterstroke from our, our manager. Um, but with injuries, does it worry you uh, about injuries going forward? I know we're out of the Carabao Cup, so we haven't got that many games coming up. Um, you know, limited um, amount of Premier League games in the next couple of months. Um, but an injury to one of those key players... I know Postacoglu done a great job in the summer by offloading a number of players. And I do expect a couple of players to come in in the January transfer window. I don't know about you, but, you know, and then in the summer we go again. Postacoglu has said in press conferences, you know, on a number of occasions that it is a process. We're going for a rebuild and it will take time. But do you worry about the injuries going forward? Yeah, I do, um, to be honest, because it almost heightens it more, doesn't it, when they're playing so well? And you, you only have to look at that Carabao Cup game to see that <clears throat> the sort of second string just aren't quite up for it. I know that was a funny game. That was a really funny game. And technically, we didn't lose because it was a draw, but we went out of the cup. Um, me and Ali were talking about those nine changes the other, the other day. I'll, I'll ask you about it in a minute, Ali, actually, because I like your opinion on that. But yeah. uh, it, it's, it, it does worry me, Chris, like you say, the key players, Madison, Son. I mean, Son's been a, just back to what we all know. And uh, I think you said in one of your earlier videos, I can't see him being out on the left again now either. He's going to be through the middle. He's going to be, he's going to do what Harry Kane did. Um, and like Ellie said before, Son's going to love playing under Ange. And he, he clearly is. And giving Son the captaincy was an absolute masterstroke and the vice captaincy to Madison and Romero, given that responsibility. I, th I just think they've all been, been awesome, but you lose until we get another centre back in. Whether we go back in for taps over in, in January, I don't know. But it's quite clear we're one injury away from Eric Dyer coming in or somebody like that. Um, and we can't, we just, you know, the, the drop off you can see now, if it was ever any clearer. The, Craig, the let me just, Craig, let me just stop you there. Um, when I was um, standing just above the tunnel, when all of the players were celebrating on Saturday, all of the players were celebrating over by the South Stand. Pierre Mujoybier walked down the tunnel. He had no interest in celebrating with the rest of the squad. Now, you mentioned Eric Dyer there. Do you think that Eric Dyer would come in if we had an injury to Eva Romero or Van der Ven? Or do you think Ashley Phillips is in front of Eric Dyer? Um, I don't know. If I'm brutally honest, having watched Ashley Phillips in the under-21 under game at Colchester, um, it was really good to see him. And he, lo he looks assured. He looks strong. He looks like he knows what he's doing. He he's very good positionally. He seems very strong. Um, he probably would, actually, thinking about it, knowing our age. Under Conte, 100% no, it would have been Dyer. Uh, in fact, Dyer would have probably got in ahead of Van der Ven. But the fact that Ange trusts in this youth, he obviously sees something he likes in Phillips and he's keen to bring the youth through. So I suppose you would hope that Phillips would get that chance. And just going on to the youngsters, uh, Chris, the Jude Sunset Bell, uh, is, he looked pretty tidy. And the keeper, is it Josh Keeley? Yeah. And made another outstanding save last night, I believe. Um, yeah. it, it, I'm sure a lot of people in, on, in the, uh, that are watching and listening to this would have heard of Josh Keeley, but just keep your eye on Josh Keeley. I think he's Irish, Chris, isn't he? Um, yeah. he's, uh, he's, uh, from what I've seen of him, I mean, he made a couple of unbelievable saves against Colchester. I think he's got the world at his feet or in his hands, however you want to put it, but he, he looks absolutely uh, fantastic. Yeah, an unbelievable save against Stoke as well. He's, he's made some fantastic saves in recent games. Yeah, give it, give it a watch online if you can find the clips. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and there, there's other ones that I that names escape more well if you want to talk about youth that's on loan Alfie Devine I think he's going to be up there I think he's going to be an important player whether it be next year or year after I think Ange really likes him it's good to see him getting a few minutes and Dane Scarlett obviously 
out with Ipswich, um, not getting as many minutes as, as uh, you'd probably like, but I'm sure he'll get his chance. So it's really good to see that Angie's going to be trusting in that youth because it takes us back to what we've always been about. Um, yeah. yeah, so Ali, if I can ask you a quick question. That Fulham game, I know we're going back and talk going over old ground, but why do you think, I think when we spoke last time, that was the only thing you, you thought you was going to take the cup seriously. And when we saw those nine changes, we thought, not that he's thrown the game, but far from it. But obviously, why has he made those nine changes? Do you, do you think he regrets it? Or are you surprised he did that? I think hindsight's a great thing. I think he put out a team that he thought could win. Uh, he's still learning about his team. He wants to know who he can trust. There were some players that played in that game that he's probably not going to feel that he can trust. I think, what we cheeky with you, the Premiership is more important for... Spurs than the Carabao Cup. I know you want to win a trophy. Does he think he can go and win that trophy this year? He won't know. He's got to get the team playing. Look, he builds a culture at the club and he tells them all they'll all get an opportunity. If he didn't play the players in that competition, then he's going to lose that trust. And a lot of them, he needs them to play at a level to enhance the whole squad, if you understand what I mean. Just because they don't play on a Saturday doesn't mean to say he wants them trudging about on a Wednesday because they're not getting any football. I think he, he builds a culture where he involves everybody so that they're all keen to impress. And when they get their opportunity, they need to take it. And to be fair, mate, the guys just didn't take it. You know, And I think he'll use youth. You know, I mean, look, he, Carter Vickers came to us from you guys and he's a great defender. You know, He's the best defender we've got and apparently that's him just coming back to fitness. So we can't wait for that. We've had a lot of injuries. Um, but Will he use young centre halves? It's hard on that league to say he would, mate, unless he's exceptional. I've not seen this boy at all. I'd be worried. I'm not so worried about if somebody up front went down because I think you've got enough quality that could probably come in and make up the difference because of how his teams play. I, I still think opportunities are created no matter what. Whereas if you lose a good solid defender, then that's where a problem might be. That's where I always thought the problem would be, to be fair, is in the defence. They need play Postacoglu, though, he, he loves players um, with great speed at the back. Yeah. And, and that is exactly why I think that Ashley Phillips will be in front of Eric Dyer. And if he's a big, strong lad, like you said, uh, look, Eric Dyer should never play for Tottenham. Uh, I've been saying it for years. Uh, he's just not good enough. Um, how he's been picked for so many teams, I, I don't know. He's very laborious. Maybe seven or eight years ago when football was played at that style, he was okay. But the, the way the game's moved on, he, he just hasn't got a hope, to be honest with you. Uh, he didn't have the tactical ability, I don't think. But, I mean, who am I? Uh, Hosey and all that thought he was good enough. Eh? But I just don't think he's good enough. So, And I don't think Ange will play him because I don't think he's got that bit about him that Ange has in his players. I don't think he's an Ange player at all. So I think if this boy is young, strong, fit, aggressive and he'll trust the other two to coach him through it you know so yeah that's a possibility he'll definitely bring probably centre half in in the new year I would have thought uh, will he bring in any more strikers don't know he's probably playing Son up roughly what he did with Furuhashi he likes his instinct players likes of Son Furuhashi they've both got that nipping ahead of players balls coming in from the wings through the middle. You'll be surprised how many balls get put through from <clears throat> the old number six and number eight kind of slots where the midfield's pushing forward and he'll make runs for the balls. Uh, Furuhashi got a lot of goals that way. You know, and he's played young boys, young lads up at Celtic. You know, the young lad we've, we've, we've had up there, he's had quite a few of the young lads play. And Sometimes that'll be a necessity. If he sees them as being part of the future, he'll play them before someone he's planning on getting rid of. Because you won't see the point otherwise. Ali, um, Italian journalist and transfer expert Fabrizio Romano stated that Tottenham are happy with the signing of Brennan Johnson and still not desperate to find a new number nine on the market uh, right now. They will, they will want to understand the uh, situation on the market closer to next summer, around March, April or May. So it looks like Spurs would be happy to wait for you know, perhaps signing another striker in 
uh, the summer transfer window. And of course, we've got um, Aleko Viles as well, who Postacoglu said not long ago that he would feature in the second part of the season. And of course, he made his Premier League debut uh, coming off the bench um, at the weekend against Liverpool. Um, Melvin... Melvin, let's come to you. Um, I just want to play a short 20-second clip of Ange Postacoglu just being so calm. Um, the, there's two clips here in one. Um, one is when Spurs scored against Sheffield United, and the other one is when Spurs got the winner um, at the death uh, against Liverpool on Saturday. <laughs> Melvin, we've gone from Antonio Conte running down the touchline, screaming, shouting, swearing at his players, demanding this, that and the other from his players to Ange Postacoglu just being completely calm. Do you like that approach? <laughs> I don't think he has. he's done a single thing where I didn't agree with him or, or I didn't like what he's done so far. It's just... I, I've always been a fan of the managers and I always back the managers. You know, on this channel, I always spoke, you know, good words about Antonio Conte, about Jose, about Pochettino, about Nuno. And I, I love this manager. I don't think I've ever felt like this about a manager so quickly. And it's just how he speaks, yeah. how, how you could see Klopp complain about decisions and it just annoys you. But then if Ange says it, the way he says it, it makes you think it, it's just how he communicates with, even with the media. And, and he says things where they're not, they're not like Conte. Conte used to talk in like code to, to try to send messages to the board and, and, and try to get money for January. Ange says it how it is. How he's straight to the point, and and the fans needed that. We needed the manager to communicate what's going to happen this season. What are, what's the aim? What's the goal? And he said it perfectly. Even when he was asked a really tough question about winning a trophy, he said the point is not just to win a trophy. It's just I want to build something bigger than that. And it's something that I said on this channel and. I was laughed at. I think he wants to build a team that will win the, the league in a year or in two years or in three years. And I feel these players, they're young. We have 20-year-olds. And he mentioned it multiple times. We're playing the North London Derby with, I think, the back line, Romero's 25. The rest are 20, 22. They're a young, young squad. And in two, three years' time, these players will be in their prime. In their prime. And... You just think this is how you know winning winning teams that win are built. You keep adding and adding more quality to to a team that that is is, is fluid and knows their system. And I think Ange is he knows that he can he can achieve that. And and we're starting to see signs that everything Ali has said, everything Postokoglu is doing in the club, it's starting to work. And we're probably ahead of where I thought we would be. I think we're probably six months ahead where I thought we would be. I thought we'd struggle in the beginning. And I thought we'd start to see this kind of football around January. And I didn't think we'd be seeing this in, in, in September, October. I thought we'd be like this in January. And I really, really am curious and excited to see what are we going to be like in January? Because at the end of the season, we play Arsenal, Newcastle, City and Liverpool all, all in one go. I might have gotten them mixed up, but something like that. And if we get, you know, six, nine, whatever, eight points from, from that run, it could really, it's, it's a really decisive <coughs> moment in, in, in our season. We could be fighting for top four. We're fighting, even challenging, pushing. We could be, you know, in, 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 I don't know, I could say a title race, but not, not really, because it depends on the opposition that we've played so far. So far, we've averaged 
like 2.4 points per game, which is something ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but Davinson yeah. Sanchez with two assists in the Champions League at Old Trafford tonight. Wow. What's yeah. the score um, for that guy, man? I'll let you know in a second. Um, Ali, I want to come back. To, Ali, I want to come back to you because um, a couple of people have written uh, comments already about this, and I was going to bring it up. Um, everyone seems to like Ange Postecoglou. Um, even the Arsenal fans have said that they like Ange Postecoglou. Arteta has come out and said he likes Ange Postecoglou. Um, Klopp even said he seemed like a nice guy when he was at Celtic. Did he ever rub anyone up the wrong way? Did anyone ever dislike Ange Postecoglou? Well, no, I think. A lot of the managers spoke highly of him. Uh, he's always got time for people. He'll help people. Uh, I think it was more Michael Beale called him a lucky, called him lucky, and Ange must have brought that up about ten times. You know, okay. I, must, I must be really lucky, winning everywhere I go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and pretty sure I saw the, the comment there asking if the Rangers fans. Uh, were complimentary about Ange. I'm pretty sure they were happy he left. Not so happy that Brendan's arrived, another treble winner. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think. Look, he's calm. He's professional. He's, you know, he sees it as a as a job. So he's there to analyze stuff. He'll do his smiling and stuff after the game. You know, he's there to to lead everyone from the front to to make sure. I mean, he'll not want any slip ups, and he'll be more focused here with the scrutiny he probably gets media duties everything i just think that he's just going to sit there and he's just he's just going to lap it up mate he's just he, you're never going to see him you know you know what you've done there yeah a lot, a lot of the stuff is he'll 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 make sure the players come over to the fans you know i mean Celtic have done that for years now you know the fans no matter what the score is you know they come over to the fans you know and thank them for for coming you know he'll make sure that happens you know, and that's about him picking things up from everywhere he's been. You know, he in Japan, I'm sure he picked up things there that he, he used when he came to Celtic, you know. So he's he's got a lot of experience, this guy. It's not like he's just started. And I've seen some of the comments when they're comparing them to, you know, they asked him about the differences between him and Artita. And he said, well, you know, I've been doing it a lot longer. Um, and yeah. and he's won a lot more. So I don't know what you want from the guy. It's I, I get the fact that he's never played in the Premiership, but Again, at the start, I said it was a bit of a snobbery thing that you know you get the same people like getting jobs in England and and pretty much failing all the time. There's only a handful of managers down there that have really consistently performed well. I mean, look, David Moyes, for instance, you know what he did at Everton. I mean, don't watch what you wish for because when they lost him, I don't think they've done yeah. so well since he's left. You know, and there's certain managers that you would look at that are decent, and others that. They get chance after chance, and just I can't understand it, you know. Craig James Madison said after the Arsenal game that Spurs are going in a different direction, and uh, some journalists used that uh, that word that I hate, Spursy. Do you think mm. that Spurs are going to lose that Spursy tag under Ange Postecoglou? I would, I would hope so. I, I would say we're. I would argue that we're well on the way to losing it. I'll probably they'll come back and bite me on the ass, but. Um, it, it, we, you know, you, you can't, I hate that term, but you can't argue that it, we have in the past been Spursy, but it's it's kind of a, a tag that people associate with it even outside football. I've heard people use use it for something, you know, very similar sort of situation. Oh, that's very Spursy. And it's, it seems like we've always been the butt of the jokes. I'm sure, I'm sure Ali's heard that as well. And, and it, look, it is what it is. It's, it's all banter, in it? But Ange has instilled something in us that, that that goes beyond anything that Mourinho and Conte ever could do. Because I think that Mourinho's got character, but Ange has got just that something else for me. Just just watching him over the last few months, he, he seems to be getting everything right at the moment. Almost, almost everything. Every, you know, he, he's just he's almost like everything he touches turns to gold. And I just hope that I just hope it carries on like it did at Celtic uh, at Tottenham. To be honest, because look, it's still early days. Like I say, we were top under Mourinho after the November um, uh, international break, I believe, going into the December of that year. 
And then when, I think we lost against Arsenal. I vaguely remember that. And that, that yes. sent us down. Um, Conte, obviously, we've touched on. Going into the World Cup break, we should have been third, actually. But it was that late equaliser, I think, with Southampton. So, look, we have been up there before. We've been there before. But this, this for me, just feels a bit different. It just does feel a bit different for some reason. I can't put my finger on it. But it just feels different to the Mourinho and the Conte. And I'm not even going to mention Nuno. Um, it just seems different. And it seems more akin to the the peak sort of potch years. I know people don't like talking about potch on this channel. But it's part of our history. And that's what it feels like. And we all remember how good that felt. And that is very similar to what Anne just brought us. So in answer to your question, I think he's well, we're well on the way to losing that, if, if, if not already. Ali, what would you say was the hardest moment for Ange Postacoglu at Celtic? What was the most difficult moment he faced? I don't really think... He loved it up there. So I don't really think he felt there was any hard moments for him. I think everyone... It, it, isn't it great that you're not listing off a whole load of things? Yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I think you guys have said it. You know, it, it everything he seemed to do just works. Uh, and, and look, half us shake our head and think, I, I, I can't understand how this is working, but it is. You know, he's he's quite infectious. And I think he's... For me, well, I mean, he, he sets this process that's been successful over all these years. And... He's continuing that now. And as for losing the Spurs, he look, look, if they lose a game of football, it'll be forgotten there and then by him. He'll move to the next game and they'll play the same style of football, they'll go through the same process, they'll do the same things. Nothing will change. He's not going to... Where do you see some managers will start changing their style because they get beat a few games and things like that? He's just yeah. not going to do it. You know, because there's no point. You've just spent half a season coaching your players to play one style of football, why would you change it and then confuse them? You know, not be funny, footballers tend not to be the brightest bunch in the world. You know, they're not that intelligent. You know? uh, I'm sure some of them are, just like anyone, but, you know, they, they, they want simple direction. They're like children in a way. You know, give them boundaries, tell them what they need to do, and that's what he does. He just, he is like a father figure to them because he just says, right, this is what I need you to do. Game in, game out, that's your job. Just do your job. You know, take risks. You know, don't be afraid of making a mistake. We all make mistakes, we're human. You know, and I think that's where people buy into him because he doesn't come into the changing room. I don't imagine he does anyway. I mean, I've never been in the changing room. It would have been great to see that. But he, he doesn't seem the type that he's going to go in and harangue players that make a mistake because he's told them, go out and make mistakes. And that's what he does. Yeah. So I don't think he's going to then hassle them for it. I'm sure they'll sit down, they'll go over it, and you'll say, right, this is what you did wrong. They've got to learn from it. And and I think that's what he means by the process and the progression, is that he teaches them how to learn by their mistakes. And, and you know, it's the goals that a lot of Celtic players scored and the calmness of it. And it was just almost like it was all automatic and expected and it was all choreographed, if you know what I mean. Um it, it just it was good that way. So I think I think you're in for a, a good ride over the next couple of years, to be fair. Uh, will you win something? Look, he's going to try. You know, and you've seen what he's play, how he's playing now. You know, he's going to he's going to have runs in the cups like that. You know, I, I can't imagine there's going to be that many teams that are going to be able to stop it when it gets going full flow. You know, you've, you've got your top teams, but they don't always win the, the Cups either. So Cups tend to be a lot of luck involved in Cups. And to be fair, Angie does get quite a fair share of his own luck. I think you make your own luck. You know, the style he plays, he tires teams out. It's it's relentless. And that's what he's like. And that's what he'll do. I, I don't think you'll have any worries there at all. Ali, are the Celtic fans missing Ange? And what, what's life been like for Celtic since he left? Yeah, but... Yeah, definitely. Um, I think what we miss the most is that, you know, even you talk about the media, the guy himself, you know, it's. It, I'm not saying it's like losing a father figure, but he's he's such a great, great person. I mean, when you listen to Brendan Rodgers speak on, on the media now, you know, 
it's it's kind of night and day to Ange. You know, when Ange is there, you're expecting a nice wee funny quip at some point where he turns around and says, listen, mate, you know. So um, I think, I think yeah, we, we miss him quite a lot because we, I'd, I'd like to have seen how he could have progressed it further because I don't think he was finished at Celtic. I don't think any fan did. I don't think he did. Uh, so I think where you've got him, you know, where he had us after just a few years was just amazing. And I think if he'd had the chance this year with the players we were bringing in and stuff, uh, he'd have progressed that again. So we're hoping that'll happen under Brendan Rodgers. He's a good manager. Look, you know, Scottish football, you're not going to get, you know, the top managers in the world coming to us to, to manage us, you know. So, and look, it. I know you guys don't like Daniel Levy and stuff like that, but Spurs are a well-run club. Uh, they don't waste a lot of money. He's hard to deal with. You've got a great stadium. The money and revenue you're bringing in from that, I mean, I looked at the figures of 2022, all the different things you're doing there. You know, that's going to stand everybody in good stead at Spurs. You know, I, don't, for- I don't think it's about the money that we've spent, Ali. I, I don't think it's about the amount of money that we've spent. I think we've just spent money very poorly in recent years. Um, Tongi on Dombele, Giovanni Lo Celso. I know Lo Celso's um, being given a chance under Postacoglu at the moment. Uh, yeah. But when you look at those two players, £100 million between the two of them, they're very, um, you know, that's just a, a good example, those two. And we've had many other players that have, have, have been a waste of money or not done so much at the football club. Um, I, I think I'll change that. Because yeah, I think he'll, he'll, he'll decide a lot more. Is it not right that yeah. uh, your chief scout's left as well? Yeah, he has. And uh, there is a there has been a lot of change and there still is a lot of change to happen because, of course, a new director of football uh, needs to be appointed. And Poster Coglu has already said in the last couple of weeks that it will make his life easier working with a director of football. So, you know, we're looking forward to that. But it, it's funny, you know, although we've had this great start to the Premier League season, there is still so much to do at the football club. But we're all pleased because it, we are all going in the right direction. So, as long as we're going in the right direction, then we're all happy. Um, Melvin, let me come to you. Um, the players so far this season, and I want to mention Eve Basuma because, of course, he struggled big time last season under Antonio Conte. Conte didn't uh, give him many chances. I know he, he struggled with injuries as well, but um, with the players that you've seen so far in the seven Premier League games that we've played, who are the players that have been the real standout performance for you? And who do you think that Postacoglu can perhaps get that little bit more from? Um, it's a tricky thing to answer because we're not really a one-man team anymore. I think it's more like a collective unit with with the entire the entire squad. You can see how how well they've gelled together and and how how happy they are. They seem to be playing together. I've been impressed with Vicario. I've been impressed with Udogi. Yeah. I've been impressed with Pedro Porro, who we bought last season, and and he's been playing brilliantly. Um, Kulusevski is showing what he showed us last season. Um, obviously, he's not scoring as much as he did, but he still scored two goals. Um, I was impressed with Brendan Johnson when he came in, when he played against Arsenal. Um, Richarlison on the left, I think against Liverpool, he was brilliant. I think Son plays better as a striker. I think Ange is, is learning more about his players game after game because he he's tweaking the lineup every now and then. Like he started with Emerson Royale and then he he's played Pedro Porro ever since. And then he played Son on the left and then he put him in the middle and left him there. I think he's learning more what he can get out of this Spurs team from game to game. I've been impressed with Basuma, obviously, even Papasar, Papasar played a really, really good game, you know, in the San Siro, and then he wasn't played since. And then he kept playing skip one day, and Ange never plays skip. I think he likes his midfielders to have legs. And it's something that I noticed that every single game he uses five subs, or very close to five subs. Yeah. It's probably because he knows by the end of the game the team is tiring out and he, he just wants to keep fresh legs and his substitutions have been really really good something i and noticed and there's so many more minutes to play as well melvin now 
Yeah, uh, this subs. I think losing Perisic was massive loss for us. Yeah, uh, I know. I know he's not a starter, but massive loss. I mean, sure. he's such a good impact player. When you have a tired, tired, tired defense, and you've subbed in Richarlison, and you maybe have Veliz, and 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 you're, I I mean, he's so effective from his set pieces, dead ball situation. It's just a mess, and and to have such a such a bad injury so late in your career, I think I messaged you, Chris, when I found out. I I just said to you, I don't think he'll play again for Spurs. I just think it's such a bad injury, and I think he has one year left on his contract. Is it? It's up at the end of this year. So um, with an ACL, uh, by the time he's recovered, um, his, his contract may have expired. But I'm with you because at that Liverpool game on Saturday. Um, Someone like him can always find that that killer ball into the box and 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 have that great delivery, uh, you know, providing a goal. So I'm with you on that uh, fact, Melvin. Um, Craig, let me come to you. Um, with the midfield of Saar, Madison, and Basuma, when Benton Kerr actually comes back, which is believed to be around November, that's not long away now. Does he get back into this starting eleven? If so, who does he replace? Yeah, obviously, eventually, uh, he's, or first off, he's going to be he's back in. You'd think and get substitute appearances, but then I think he'd, he's he's got a he's got to play his way into it, hasn't he? He's got to play his way into that team, which sounds crazy saying that about somebody like Benton Cook. Like when he did the injury in January, we all thought, "Oh God, you know who who is there to replace him?" And now it seems we've got a wealth of talent in the middle. Sar has been a shining light in there. Um, We've got you options. Would think we have got options, and but that's what all the best teams have, isn't it? You've got strength in position. You know, you strengthen in positions of strength, essentially. And having two or three options in the middle is extremely important in the formation we play. You know, you should be seamless when players come in, not essentially weaken the team. Um, who's he going to replace? I, I don't know. I would imagine it of the three. <laughs> It would be more likely to be Saar. Um, but he's been playing so well, it yeah. almost seems unfair. But I it's a lovely problem to have. I don't think Ange will see it that way. He'll he'll have maybe four or five of them in the middle of that park that he'll see as being first starters. He won't see them as, you're the sub, you're a starter. Uh, some of them will get 60 minutes, some will get 30. Uh, yeah, and that's how he'll do it. Mm. The fact that he's maybe having to play the same ones just now, he had to do that at Celtic sometimes, but he tended to move that bit of the pitch about a bit because of the amount of workload that they have. Uh, ah, right. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about that, Ali, actually, because we've, we've, our starting 11 has been more or less the same. The only time it kind of hasn't is when we've had the odd injury. So is that. Is that similar to what it was like at Celtic, or, or did he, he, did he, he tended switch to it up? try and play? Yeah, he tried to tend to play. Look, he'll he'll know when they're fit enough. At this stage of the season, he won't be so bothered. But as the season progresses, he's going to know that some players will need rest. You know, if you go further into cup competitions, it's more games, things like that. So I just think that he doesn't look at it from a a point of view that you're a starter. You know, he'll pick a team he thinks that is ready for that week to play. And if somebody's dipping a bit in training, he'll just swap them out for someone else. If he sees any tiredness and things like that, which you will get, you know, so he'll ju judge it game by game and, you know, the strongest will stay at the top and obviously the other ones will get the 30 minutes and things like that. So the reason he does all the changes is because of the workload they've all got, you know. Yeah. And it keeps it fresh. And, and that's why he brings in like for like players. Like you say, that it's seamless when they might not be of the same standard, but it doesn't affect the team as a whole that much is how I'd probably put it. You know, because when we made substitutions, you'd be like, well, mm, but it didn't really affect the performance that much. You know, and sometimes it enhanced it because players are coming in to try and prove themselves. And because there's not that much of a difference in standard, that's what you'll be looking for. That's my opinion. But well, lastly, I wanted to talk about the um, our next Premier League game before the international break. Now, these are uh, the Spurs fixtures. Uh, we have got six games from now until the start of December. So it's only six Premier League games in the next couple of months. So we've got Luton away, Fulham at home, Crystal Palace away, 
Chelsea at home when Pochettino returns, Wolves away, and then Aston Villa at home. Melvin, how are you feeling ahead of these six games, in particular the Luton away game on Saturday? Um, they were in action this evening at home against Burnley, and they lost 2-1. Um, Luton have played seven so far this season, only winning one, drawing one, and losing five. Scored six goals, conceded 14, four points. Um, honestly, I you look at every single fixture and you think they're all winnable. Barring if we have major injuries, mm. we're going to go into every single game believing that we can win. And if and the more we win, let's say we let's say we do beat Luton. The more we win, the more momentum we will have. The more belief, the more the better we will we will play. The the, the more play, you know, we still have to see. We still have to wait for Brandon Johnson to play. I think we haven't even seen our best eleven yet. I don't think we've had. I think maybe the Arsenal fixture. I think that's the best eleven we can play. I think with Son, Brendan Johnson, Kulusevski, Saar, Besuma in the back line. And, and, and I think we can get maximum points, barring, you know, things you cannot control, maybe a VAR mistake or, or an unlucky penalty in the end. I think we can, we can beat most teams, even, even teams like Chelsea and, and, and Fulham, I know we struggled against Fulham in the cup, but that was with nine, nine different players, and and we lost with penalties. But I think there's a real belief within the club that we can we can do something this season, and 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 we can win most games. And I mean, we're still undefeated this season, and we've played Arsenal away and Liverpool at home, and we've played Manchester United at home. I mean, those are fixtures at last season. I don't think we've won any of those three. So it's it's a really, really massive difference from last season. And and I don't think I don't think we'll go into any fixture and, and the players don't believe that they can win. Melvin, if we beat Luton at Kenilworth Road on Saturday lunchtime, Spurs would go top of the Premier League table. And when you look at the weekend's fixtures, Arsenal play Manchester City at the Emirates on Sunday afternoon. Um, how would you feel Spurs being top of the Premier League table going into the international break? Um, obviously, it's, it's a nice feeling, but we, I think we, we've had it before under Conte where we were top of the league. I'd rather be, you know, top of the league in, in the in the end of, in the end in the end of the season. But but yeah, it's it's a nice feeling, something that we didn't expect. But, but yeah, it's it's a winnable fixture. I mean, you have to be beating these teams. We have to be beating these teams. Uh, other than the really big boys, I really there isn't a team where I don't expect us to win. And that's strange coming coming now because I wouldn't have said that in early August. I think early August, it's just like I said before. I think Ange has changed our our expectations and our perspective of the team. I think we're way ahead, way ahead of schedule and, and I know even you said don't get ahead of ourselves but but we've seen enough we've seen enough from this team where we know where 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 we are at this point and teams like Luton we have to be beaten we have to beat them see Craig I was standing in the pub with Melvin on Saturday and I said don't get carried away we've been here before don't get carried away are you getting carried away now Craig uh, I, do you know what? Inside, I am a little bit. I just try not to show it. But how how is it how is it wrong? Like Alex said, to, to to not get carried away a little bit. That's why we love sport. That's why we love football. It's to get carried away, to get drawn in and sucked in, and then you know, as being yeah. a Spurs fan, as we all know, ultimately be let down eventually. But it's they yeah. keep bringing you back. They keep bringing you back, and. And one day it's going to happen. And who's to say it's not going to be this year? I'm not saying we're going to win the league or anything like that, but wouldn't it be lovely to be in the hunt, you know, from where we've been over the last three years? I'll take that at the moment. You know, I'm not I'm not greedy. <laughs> but imagine being in this position going into the last six, seven games. It would be unbelievable. And I think it would be important. It would be an achievement, a hell of an achievement, to be top going into the international break because for, for two weeks... Every time one of our players looks at the league table, it's not going to move. Nothing's going to change. 
And you would think if we beat Luton, then Arsenal are not going to beat beat Manchester City by that many goals if they do beat them and go above us. So, uh, and obviously the only way we can avoid being second if we beat Luton is, is a Manchester City win. So yeah. who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? All we can do is win our games. Luton would be, with the greatest respect to Luton uh, and Luton fans, Luton is the, is the sort of game I'd be expected to win whether Conte was in charge with Mourinho. That's not us feeling entitled. It's just a matter of fact. So I expect uh, a decent Tottenham win on Saturday and nothing else, to be honest with you. Um, the curse of the early kickoff and all that, um, I couldn't tell you what our stats are. I do vividly remember us not doing particularly well at the early kickoff on a Saturday, but we just got to get on with it and 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 hopefully we'll come out victors. But um, uh, Andrew, just a, get them up I, earlier. I, you what, mate? I says, Angel, just get them up earlier. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'll just, 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 um, just like I say, Chris. I watched your uh, video. You was on um, with uh, Timmy and ah um, oh, the, the Australian Rowie. radio station, Rowie and Timmy. Your mate, yeah. my mate. Yeah, my mate's now. But it's, it's great to see that they're Tottenham fans now because of uh, because of Big Ange. Time, yeah. uh, you know, I get messages from people in Australia on on X and. and it, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And they must be so proud that one of their countrymen is getting so much love and doing so well because he has been up against it and he's proved again that he is the real deal, this guy. And uh, long may continue. I, I think, think, you, I think sorry, your, hard, your hardest game there, I think, is going to be Aston Villa. Mm. Their team set up to play against a Postacoglu type team, I think. Because they beat they Chelsea, in. Ali. We're nah, going to beat you, Chelsea, do you think? You're, you're brought it against Chelsea, I think. Uh, they're, they're struggling. Uh, and I just think that Aston Villa are on a bit of a, a crest at the moment themselves. I think they've got a good manager. I think they set up well. They're solid. I think they'll be a hard nut to crack. I think they'll be your hardest challenge out of that lot that you're coming up against. Mark my words. That'll be a... Ali, we Ali, would you expect Spurs to go and get the three points at Kenilworth Road Saturday? Oh, yeah, I would expect that. But again, I would but, expect that anyway, to be fair. Uh, yeah. But, but look, I mean, the fact that you guys are now sitting talking about, you know, going to Chelsea shouldn't be a problem. We've beat Man United. You know, we're drawing with Arsenal. They're playing really well. Liverpool are won a game this year. You know, fair enough, there was a VAR thing. But at the end of the day, you earned the result, in my opinion. Uh, I just think that the optimism you guys have got now compared to when I first spoke to you, I think you're just right. And I think Ange has done a lot of that. But I think the players, the fans, the club, everyone's all bought into it. So if you buy into something, you're all in it together, then it makes Ange's job a lot easier, to be honest with you. And he'll just he'll just push and push and push. You know, his motivations will be this Spursy stuff. You know, he'll be like, ah, right, we'll, we'll not be having any talk of that. You know, he'll just get stuck yeah. right in. You know, and I think... Man City won't like playing his team because they're going to be you're going to be in their face the whole game, and they just won't like that because they don't they just don't like it you know. Uh, Any time they've kind of looked a bit nervous when that when you're forcing them off to play a lot quicker. So I think that's what another benefit you get from Ange's style of football is that it doesn't matter how good the team is you're up against your players are right in amongst them and. Like you've already said, you know, you don't have to worry about whether your players are up for it on a given day. Other teams still have that problem because they don't have that mentality that Anne seems to give to his teams. You know, some teams just don't turn up, like Man City didn't really turn up against Wolves. You know, they're going to have games like that. I, I just don't think there's going to be any game where you guys aren't on top of, you know, your game, to be honest with you. You know, because that's how he sets them up. He sets them up to go out and race out of the tracks, as they say. Last questions for you all. Um, Ali, let's start with you. Score prediction for Luton v Tottenham on Saturday. And I would like to ask you as well, where do you think Spurs will end up in the Premier League table at the end of the season, having had this good start? <sighs> right, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, against Luton. 4-1. Um, with a okay. sudden hat trick, get on your coupon. Uh, and where will you come in the league? 
Man City is going to be hard to be above. I don't think Arsenal will have the same type of season. I think Liverpool, yourselves, Arsenal, and possibly Aston Villa, to be honest with you, are probably the, the top five, I would think, at the moment, and on form anyway, because I think Aston Villa are doing well. I can't really see Brighton, look, they're playing well, but I think squad size will always be a problem for them uh, when any injuries come along. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go third, mate. Did you say third? Yeah. Wow. I didn't expect that. Melvin, what are you saying? Um, I've got a back with my number. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get that Spurs shirt, Ali. It's not happening. <laughs> next, time will be, next, next time will be next, second. The next time you're on here, you'll be wearing a Spurs shirt, I'm sure. <laughs> if you start, if you win the league, Melbourne. I'll put a Spurs shirt on for you. I'm gonna hold you there. Yeah. And um, a tattoo. I no, think I two nil, two nil to Spurs. You know, it'd be nice to have a clean sheet. And um, I think we'll get fourth. Let's say fourth, fourth spot. Okay, Craig. I'm going to be super optimistic, right? I'm, I'm going to be totally disrespectful to Luton and say we're going to win five 0 Saturday. Um, and because I think, and I genuinely think we're going to give somebody a tonk in this season. I think we are going to get a tonk in. By the way, I don't know who <laughs> that will be from. But I think we will eventually. But I think we will when it all comes together. I think it could be another, another, um, another result like the other week. Um, and where am I? Where are we going to finish? Uh, head says fourth, but the heart says third. So I'm going to agree with Ali. Oh, that, that is two places up the table more than I predicted at the beginning of the season. Um, so I'm going to say third as of now. Well, wow. you're also positive. I'm, I'm going to say. Um, 2 0 or 3 0 Spurs win on Saturday, and uh, I'm going to say Spurs will finish top six. I'm not feeling that optimistic as yet. I think that you're there's a long cautious. way to go. You're, you're being cautious. cautious. I know. And I, I'm letting myself run away with me tonight, but I don't care. Yeah, I think there's, there's a long way to go, but um, long may this continue because, as I say, the, the mood, the togetherness, everything that Andrew's delivering at the football club right now. And as I said earlier, you know, director of football to come, um, many more people to come in, uh, many more changes at the football club as well. Um, you know, you don't know what Ange can achieve and uh, I'm looking forward to it, uh, but I am really loving this right now. Um, Melvin, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Pleasure having you back. I uh, look forward to seeing you in England again very soon. I'm sure you'll be booking those flights when we're playing football like this again. Yeah, um, I told my girlfriend last season, I said, I'm not going to go to London again. I'm not going to watch Spurs again. And then we started playing this crazy football and, and I, I was so excited to come. And it didn't disappoint because we've had an insane game versus Liverpool. And yeah, I can't wait to be back. I'm already looking at flights and possible games and eyeing, my, and eyeing a really big fixture and Maybe, I don't know, maybe Chelsea, maybe Newcastle, maybe West Ham. I think they're all going to be big games on the range. That's the thing. The home games are going to be all massive and hopefully we keep winning. Actually, I, I forgot to ask you, that clip that I played earlier with all those fans singing and dancing, I hope you were doing the same. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Craig, thanks so much for coming back. Pleasure having you here. And uh, where can people find you? What are you up to at the moment? Um, yeah, just just enjoying Tottenham really, um, and it, it's just so good to feel good about the club I support again, which is all you can ask for. Um, thanks for having me on again. If you want to follow me at DM9 on X, um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, always enjoy talking about Spurs, but much nicer to talk about them when we're doing doing well. So, uh, come on, you Spurs, Greg. Let me just say it is so much easier us recording these podcasts when it's when it's like this isn't it oh god it's so much easier it, it really is i mean we said before i've been on here after some shocking defeats i mean me and melvin actually seem to go for, I, I kind of 
we went through a phase where we was on after some terrible performances and and while it's good to vent and i said to you you know people like to tune in to it's almost cathartic it's bloody hard doing these because the last thing you want to do after seeing performances that are terrible is talk about it sometimes as much as they say it's good to talk i'm not sure it is about tottenham sometimes so yeah, uh, yeah. but it is easier to do definitely 100 percent easier to do when things are going well so again long may that continue this is to be, uh, this is only the start as well you it is going to get better and it can't not get better with the way he does it so it's as simple as that you know he's there is going to be a progression the style will get quicker better more fluid you know, you're not going to win every game. It's the Premier League. Uh, but I'm confident that the way he plays is some some teams will have to set up in certain ways to try and stop him from playing. And Do you know what, Ali? Do you know what? It, it, it's so good at the moment because no Spurs fan is mentioning the England captain that went to Bayern Munich. No one is, and none of you guys have mentioned him this evening on the I stream. Told, I told you all that he would be gone. I said at the start, when I came on, I said, Hans just won't have him there. If he's not interested, he'll be gone. Clearly wasn't yeah. interested, so he was gone. And he wouldn't bother him. You know, I told you he had other players he would bring in. He's, his style isn't reliant on one big striker that, that scores a lot of goals, you know? Uh, yeah. And I told you, Son would fill that gap anyway, no baller, so and he has. And uh, they'll expect to score from more players. The, you know, we, we had a lot of players around the 15 20 goal mark, mm. so yeah, uh, that's what he'll expect down there. He'll expect guys to be all comp- contributing, so yeah, well, it'll well, get better as well because he's going to bring in reinforcements. He'll some of the players that he's got there, I mean, you see improvement in them now. Give them another six months, just think the improvement they're going to have then. What a way to end the show. Ali saying things will get better for Tottenham when we're sitting <laughs> second, unbeaten in the Premier League table, one point behind Manchester City and a chance to go top of the Premier League table uh, when hopefully we beat Luton on Saturday afternoon. Ali, thanks so much for joining us. Hopefully you can come back on again very soon. Um, okay. Craig, Melvin, Ali, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you don't subscribe to uh, the channel on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button, like, share and comment below. And uh, this will also be available on all audio platforms shortly after this stream finishes. Um, I will see you Saturday afternoon when hopefully Spurs have beaten Luton at Kenilworth Road. Until then, come on you Spurs.